A Southworth duplex boiler feed pump service, part two. The new complete O-ring set for the pump arrives from Blackgate's engineering, quickly as always. Before disassembly, the pump needs cleaning. I think this is a job for my ultrasonic cleaner, using Cabisonic EP24R cleaning solution. I find that this type of cleaning solution is the best for the job. It's not caustic and it doesn't corrode the metal. In this slow motion close-up clip, you can see just how dirty the pump is. To do this job properly and change all of the O-rings on the pump, I do need to dismantle it and I do not want this dirt to get inside the engine. Depending on the length of exposure of the pieces of metal to this carbisonic cleaner, it depends whether the paint gets removed. On this pump I do notice some chipped and worn paint on the operating arms. This should disappear. After an initial adjustment of the valve timing on the pump, I do notice that it is still not quite perfect. The reason for this will become apparent as I dismantle the pump. Just in case you're wondering why the pump is sat on a piece of cardboard, it's to stop the bolts at the bottom from scratching my workbench. The postman rang my doorbell and I had to sign for a package, and the package contained some Carbusonic EP24R cleaning solution. Please be aware that all ultrasonic cleaning solutions are not the same. This one is designed for engine parts and aluminium and cleaning carburettors. I used the cleaning solution in my ultrasonic cleaner a while ago to clean an old Mammoth steam engine, but it was dissolving the flywheel. This stuff does not attack aluminium alloys. One of the good things about living alone is you can have an ultrasonic cleaner on the draining board of your sink. It's strange how things pan out in life. When I divorced my second wife, the thing I was most worried about, well, there were two things I was most worried about, how to operate the washing machine and how to pair socks. Thankfully, I do have a working solution to both of these horrendous problems. First of all, I read the manual for the washing machine and then I threw away all my socks and just bought black ones so I don't have to pair them. You've just seen me add some carbisonic liquid to the ultrasonic cleaner and now I'm filling it up to the top with boiling water. This ultrasonic cleaner has a 15 litre tank and it takes some filling. Please bear in mind, even though I could have bought a long, slim ultrasonic cleaner, I then could not have cleaned flywheels. With the basket in the sink, I placed the engine in position and then lifted it out and carefully put the basket in the ultrasonic cleaning liquid. As you can see, even with the displacement of the pump, I still need to put a lot more water in. And here's a first on my channel. This is an image of soap bubbles disappearing during the filling of my ultrasonic cleaner. I'm hoping that it will just need one more kettle full of water. I'll soon find out. Here comes the final kettle full of water. The only problem with having a 15 litre tank of water is you do need to use more of the Carbusonic cleaning solution which with postage is about £25. And I was wrong, I need yet another kettle full of water to completely immerse the pump in the liquid. The process became a bit faster once I realised that I should fill the kettle with the very hot water from my kitchen tap. Here goes the final kettle full, and now the pump is more or less completely immersed. Even though this is an ultrasonic cleaner, it does make a noise, but the ultrasonic effect takes place within the water. I replace the lid on the tank and press the button to start the machine. To get rid of all the dirt on this pump, it was in the liquid for three 30 minute periods. I think it was worth it though, look at it now, there are one or two slight marks still on there, which I think is the remains of some of the paint. I just scraped this off with a piece of Scotch-Brite. Now the pump is squeaky clean on the outside and possibly on the inside, I thought I would have a look at the mechanism. Both of these pistons feel very different. The one nearest the camera is quite stiff and doesn't feel good at all, whereas the other one is very smooth. I will look at this issue in due course as I strip down the pump.
For now, I'm just reveling in the fact that the pump is squeaky clean. Here are the O-ring seals that arrived from Blackgates. I ordered two sets on purpose. When I ordered them, I was thinking about using the principle of cutting the O-rings with a Stanley knife and then fitting them back in place, which I'm pretty sure does work. But I don't think I'll do this. I'll have enough on with this job when I try to find out why one piston is not feeling good and the other's OK. I even considered using some graphited yarn as well as the O-rings, which I've done on many Southworth pumps. But I'll see how it goes and remedy any problems that I find when I give the pump a steam test. Nothing in this job is ever simple. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.